Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam, and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. You can think of it as an introductory college-level course. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more, and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So in this video I'm going to go through pressure and seals. Let's get started. Pressure. Good thing and bad thing. All your stills should be designed and built as an open system. What this means is there is nothing closing off the still from the uh, external environment. No valves. You can have a sort of a liquid lock as in with a thumper uh, plates bubble plates sometimes are also flooded and uh, they act sort of like closing a valve but in both cases it's typically not dangerous as it's holding just a relatively low amount of uh, liquid back Uh, I'll give you an example in your thumper. So, here, let me draw the lid first. So, let's say... Let's say this thumper is massive. Because I got some simple numbers rolling around in my head. So this is our massive, massive thumper. And we're going to say the height of this water is 12 inches or roughly 300 millimeters. The pressure that needs to be overcome for the vapor coming through the thumper is actually not that great. At 12 inches, it's about 0 0.433 PSI. That's not a lot. But, uh, you know, as we'll see later on, when I start drawing out some still designs, The uh, amount of pressure, if you build a system that can be turned from an open system into a closed system, or say closing a valve, pressure can ramp up really quickly and dangerously. That's, I should also mention that this 0.433 PSI, it would only be if the diameter, or yeah, if the, uh, no, the surface area that this cylinder takes up was only uh, one square inch. Because it's 0.33 pounds per square inch. So yeah, it's not that much, but, and you may have uh, seen this on one of George's video from his the channel Barley and Hops. About a year back, he made a, a video called Thumpers, Challenges, and Failures. And there's a photo of it, a photo of a still, and the guy operating it uh, was just boiling water, and then he got to some point uh, when I guess when water was condensing out of it and he just turned off the heating so he had this large still on top of a gas burner and then uh, uh, I 
can't remember exactly what it'll look like, but we'll just say it looks like like this, and then it goes down to a thumper. Then this would go off to his condenser or worm or whatever he has. But yeah, this thing was all crumpled in like this after he was done. So what happened was you had you had the liquid in there. Let's just say it was half full. I don't know what its capacity was. The liquid turns into a vapor. It fills up this entire area and up here and all through the tube. And then some of that vapor will condense into the thumper, heat up the thumper, and then the vapor will lead from the thumper out to the condenser. And once that vapor that is, uh, that's still here cools, the pressure is going to drop because the, uh, you know the formula, PV equals NRT. So we cut off the heating. So when temperature drops, pressure drops. When temperature goes up, pressure goes up. So the temperature was dropping, pressure was dropping, and the outward force from the vapor inside has to drop below atmospheric, which is 1.13 kilopascals, 14.7 uh, PSI, or just uh, one atmosphere. Can't remember what it is in bars. Anyways, the pressure in here inside would have dropped below 14.7 PSI, below atmospheric, and at the same time, the amount of pressure on the outside pushing in would have had to overcome the, uh, the strength of the metal. So his still was made out of copper, and copper is a very based on what, or in relation to what else you can use, copper is a weak metal. This is why I suggest always making a stainless steel still and putting copper in there if you need copper for sulfur compounds. You won't have this issue of a vacuum implosion due to a drop in pressure due to a drop in temperature. Instead, what will happen is the liquid from the thumper will get sucked up back inside. That said, if you have to have a copper still for whatever reason, and just like George mentions, put a way to vent. So, you know, you could put like a, a T a T valve right here, right? Put a valve, sorry, a T joint with a valve. Just put something right here. Well, I think that's the symbol for a valve. You know what? We'll just draw a valve. You do something like that. Your valve so that you know once you're finished you open this up and air can get sucked in and you don't the copper won't collapse in on itself but most uh, still designs oops most still designs these days are completely open in the first place ignoring the thumper you know, you have your regular pot still design.
the condenser or this goes to a worm or to a regular or to like a, a Liebig condenser but it's still all open there's nothing closing it off there's no valves there's no thumper you can have a, a vapor management reflux still and that looks like uh, I won't draw the boiler I'll just draw the still head And I'm going to go sort of based on the man named uh, Zymer G. Bob that made some really good drawings or uh, sketches of. And then, from what I recall, there was a part that came like this. Then you would have your this will be your product condenser i mean no this will be your reflux condenser and then this will be your product condenser right here so yeah, this is still all open. All the vapor will come up. Oh yeah, and he also had a valve. Right about. We'll make this a butterfly valve because I can't remember what he had here. So even if this valve is closed, technically speaking, vapor can go up this way. Realistically, it won't because this will be really cold all in here. And vapors will condense, drop down into here as a liquid, and spill over the edge, drop back down into the column. That would be in full reflux, or what you would call full reflux mode. Now, if you open up the valve, then the vapors can travel out and down into the product condenser. And you can vary the amount of opening, so the, you can vary the amount of vapor leaving. And that's why it's called a vapor management still. Then you have uh, another type of still called liquid management. Essentially, it would look like this. And then there was a... A valve here then I went to the condenser and then you have your reflux condenser up here liquid would vapor will rise It'll go around through here, condense, drop back down, and then a bit of liquid will start building up here, right, on this plate, until it can spill over. And then you'd open the valve to allow a certain amount of liquid to escape. So when it's fully closed, you'll have full reflux. And then as you open it slowly, you lower the amount of reflux and you allow more liquid to come out. That's why this was called liquid manage. But still, this design is completely open because technically if the pressure got too high, the vapor would just force itself right past the reflux condenser. Uh, the fourth design is going to be called cooling management. There are actually a couple ways to do this one. I will draw Zymer G. Bob's design, that uh, how I can remember it at least. And then the condenser, your product condenser. And then he also had a cooling tube coming through like this. And you would there would be a valve on one side. We'll just put the valve over here. You 
you vary the amount of coolant going through this and that prevents certain vapors from coming up and over and out the product condenser. Some of them will use a cooling tube, some of them use uh, a deflagmator which looks like a shotgun condenser but it's actually inside the tube so it'll be like this and then look like that and the vapor goes up these thin tubes and in the shell part you would have coolant. That's a bad drawing. Let's draw a big. So it looks like this. Your coolant fills in here, here, here. Vapors travel up this way or they cool and they drip back down up and down this is called cooling management or CM because you're varying the amount of coolant that comes through this tube or through the deflagmator so you know you have liquid coming in liquid coming out but again still it's open the pressure gets too high the vapor can just push its way right past the cooling condenser and out the product condenser then you have a CCVM which is my my style of still um, sort of a combination of well no it's like a vapor management except vapor management except it uses this coil here and st instead of a valve so you have your your reflux coil and it's blocking the path of the vapor so the vapor will condense on the coil and drip back down in full reflux and then if you want less reflux you simply move this coil up a little bit or completely out of the path for the vapor or of the uh, the point of no return where the product condenser is but again like all the other designs it's open to the environment there's too much pressure nothing can happen if it'll just blow by that on its own is a problem but uh, if you keep your reflux condenser coolant, or in all these cases, your coolant cool enough, it will knock down all the vapors that you have to worry about. You should be doing this outside in the first place because you want a well-ventilated area for the vapors, the flammable vapors. All right, so let's move from pressure to seals there are essentially three materials that I would say are you can that, that you can use for a uh, a still first one is going to be a compound called PTFE polytetrafluoroethylene otherwise known as Teflon that's this stuff it is highly resistant to ethanol and all of the compounds typically found in the wash and importantly like the rest of these it is resistant to these compounds at both high and low temperatures now Teflon gets its strength from carbon fluorine bonds uh, these are covalent bonds meaning they share electrons 
but due to fluorine's high electronegativity, there's also some ionic bonding going on. So these bonds are uh, stronger, or I should say the total bonding is stronger, which pulls the molecules together. So they start off with tetrafluoroethylene, I'll just say TFE, and then they use a poly polymerization method to turn it from these TFE molecules into a polymer, which is essentially just a chain of them. And then we got our, and this is essentially all uh, Teflon is. It's just a whole bunch of these. And this is what makes it strong. So both the covalent bonding and the ionic bonding pulls them together, making the overall bond strength stronger. And you get this, TTFE. Probably the most used uh, sealing compound, either in tape form or as these gaskets that go between the uh, sanitary fittings. The second most popular sealant would probably be a platinum cured silicone highly resistant material uh, ethanol resistant material at both high and low temperatures resistant to a lot of other organic compounds this is probably the more complex molecule so I'm not going to draw it out fully take too much time simply put they take two types of compounds called siloxanes a vinyl based one and a methyl based one so we got our Here's our vinyl based siloxane and they add it to a little vinyl based oops they add it to a methyl based They use the platinum catalyst and you get this complex molecule that looks like this. But this isn't the full molecule, this is only a part of it. And you've seen these two siloxanes before, uh, typically it will be as uh, the silicone sealant you see used in bathrooms. The uh, semi-clear stuff. That's essentially what they use. Yes, so this is your cross-linked silicone polymer. And after they've done that, it comes out looking like this. Very flexible. This is a, a good material to use because all the bonds are saturated and that's one of the reasons why this is a very not uh, inert, well not so much inert, let's say non-reactive compound to use. The third Material will be EPDM, ethylene propylene diene monomer rubber, uh, also highly resistant to ethanol, 
at both high and low temperatures. It's used a lot in the beer brewing industry. Um, this compound's high resistance is due to a saturated carbon backbone, which looks like this. And that's the molecule. In terms of complexity, it's not that bad organic chemistry wise. It may see complex, but it's because of this saturated carbon backbone that uh, this compound is very non reactive to ethanol or resistant to ethanol and a lot of the other organic compounds. I don't have any, I don't use it. I stick mostly to the silicone and the Teflon. There is also a fourth material people use and it's just plain old dough, bread dough. Flour and water made into a thick, thick paste. Mix it onto the joint. As you're uh, distilling, it bakes, essentially turning into a bread. This is a very old way of sealing off joins between pipes for purpose of distilling. And uh, that's pressure and seals. Uh, I hope this wasn't too complicated. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and click that bell for notification of new videos. If you want me to do a video on a specific topic, leave a comment or send an email and we'll discuss it. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.